standing sentinel at the front of the building is this wonderful shark. The building in itself is very unusual and was based upon the idea of the shape of ships as we're right next to the River Humber. You can see this now with the rear end of the stern of the ship coming up to the bow there, but it's more clear from the other side. And there we have the River Humber. You might feel you see the shape of the ship more easily in a moment. Here, for instance. And it's this view that I tend to use as my main part of the design for my painting. It's this top shape reflecting in the sunlight down into the water below when the tide is in that gives me... The aquarium isn't just meant to be a whole load of fish tanks or animals on display. It's an educational experience and so the amount of visual aids uh, are tremendous in there. The technology that's been put into it and the research and the films and the supporting data are very impressive and will guide you through how the ocean started and how fish were created and what is actually happening in the world today. There are very few works of art in the deep as it's not felt the direction they wish to go, but I am honoured to have this one picture of mine hanging there permanently. Let's now take a walk down the corridors and look at the various animals and the wonderful tanks and fish that are there on display. During my two-day residency I had students with me and I showed them some of these methods I've shown you in this video. How to use pastels with water, how to use pastels over watercolour and, and over the inks. And they used these with great success and thoroughly enjoyed it. It gave them a rapid technique and method to be able to produce work uh, from moving objects.
This is the area that I was going to centre my painting upon in this uh, Prospex Tunnel, looking up at these gorgeous blues, the fish going right over and above us, the huge sharks coming out at us, and this feeling of actually being underwater. And of course the beauty of having this lovely light and the figures of the children and adults looking in awe up at this scenery. And the video camera is a very useful machine to have. This is one of the shots I actually used in the painting, as is this one. Uh, the video camera does low light work, and we don't want to be using flashes in situations like this which can frighten the animals or disturb other people. The video cameras can be used without uh, lights and will take in and, and accept these low light images and still get the movement of the fish. The scale of objects is very important. Here's a fish tank, and then if we put a figure in front of it, we can actually see the scale and size of the fish. They could have been minnows before that figure went in. Let's look at some worksheets that I did for the deep earlier on and for use with students. Here we can see the use of complementary colours, that fish actually use the opposites in the colour circles themselves to be attractive or to give warning. How we can use the shots we've taken in there to abstract from. We can use them on the computer and turn them into abstract art. We can use the textures for patterns, we can use the textures for fabric, we can use the textures for pottery. And we're going to see some examples of my pottery actually done from that later. We can take the shoals of fish and turn them into patterns, we can change the colours around. And you'll see one of my paintings earlier that was done with the gold leaf and that particular shoal of red amongst it. Translucency and transparency, how on earth to show that, like glass, that a fish is semi-transparent. And of course, the way we can take the directions for sculpture and pottery. We can take these forms of shells, we can take the forms of fish, and we can use them, as I have here, to build ceramics and sculptural forms from afterwards. I've already discussed scale with you and here we have that example again and how we can have a large object in front of a small or small in front of large to give the size of things. Camouflage and pattern in the way that we can use dots or squares or patterns or textures or shapes and, and make a picture out of those. I did this as an example to show how a zebra or tiger works in the fact that they hide by camouflaging broken shapes. And finally to show that anything repeated makes a pattern. And these are the type of shots I was taking with a video camera that I could use in my final painting. <laughs> 